my mouth is huge and hairy. Ah! Okay, cool. All right, sorry about that. Um, yes, we want to solder up these battery leads to this guy right here. This is important though. This is the lead that's actually coming out of the uh, keyboard circuit board. So you want to make sure that it's going to the positive and negative leads within here. Now luckily, even though I removed the wires without taking note, if you can see, can I get you? There we go. You can see a little minus sign and a little plus sign. That's cool. That was already on there. What we're going to do Put the red on the positive, and the black on the negative. So, solder the connections onto the, the case. Uh, one thing I found when I was trying to assemble this thing was... So we can flip this little dongly thing out of the way. When you're trying to put this thing in, there's a bunch of parts that are getting in the way. And when you try to put the, uh, the case on, there's not really a lot of room. If you look closely here if I tried to like let's let's say I, I even removed this post this screw post here and this screw post and this guy and this guy if I put all of that together it would still have a little bit of overhang over here and because of the shape of this case it won't allow for that so what I did in the past was I actually had to gouge out a little bit of the case right there and that's not a really effective uh, way of doing this because I want to make it look stock and I don't want to weaken parts of the outside shell because it's going to be going through a lot. So what I'm going to do is instead I'm going to modify the circuit board because I noticed that there are parts of the circuit board that actually don't contain any circuitry. I can get that into focus there. Focus, there we go. Uh, like this area here. So what I can do is I can actually cut out a little notch for one of the screw posts and this screw post right here, this little screw hole, I can widen and fit around the other screw post. So, you know, I have a little more structural integrity for the, uh, uh, for this, this guy. And, uh, you know, I only have like one screw left over. So, we'll do that with the Dremel. So you can see I cut out a little notch. Which fits perfectly. I just used a... Oh god, I'm big again! I just used a cutoff disc to uh, dremel out the little notch. And now I'm going to use this little raspy thing to widen the screw hole. Probably should have done all these modifications to the board before I soldered everything in place, but oh, I'll live and learn. Okay, so now I can show you the little notch fits around the screw post, and I widen the screw hole so that everything just fits neatly into place. And there we go. But we still have a little bit more stuff to do. On this side, this little peg is getting in the way of the transmitter right here, this little silver bump. And this screw post doesn't have a corresponding hole on this circuit board to match. So I'm going to have to remove both of these things with the cutoff disc. Now with this side, we have uh, two of these sort of bumps that the uh, the posts set into. Since we removed a post, I don't want this thing pushing down on the circuit board for no reason, so let's figure out. It's this one here that has to go, so I'll just cut that off with the cutoff disc as well. Put everything back in. Um, when you take the circuit board out of the keyboard, 
there's a little on-off button that's actually linked up to a plastic on-off button on the outside. Make sure that's set to on, because you won't have access to it later. The way you turn the, th the device on and off after this point is to just put like a little wedge of plastic in between the uh, battery uh, compartments. So make sure this little guy is set to on. It's, it's actually labeled on-off. Can't really get that in before. There we go. On-off. See? There's your final button and circuit board assembly. And it uh, presses down on the top there. What I've done is I've taken this easy button and I filed off the easy. It's kind of a raised thing, so it's you know a little bit of an undertaking to do it. And I've had varying degrees of success trying to get the, the button smooth afterward. You can see all my little gouge marks and stuff there. So. I don't know, maybe I'll steampunk the patina on this thing and make it look all crazy retro, hammered out. Because that's what this kind of looks like. But it's just plastic. So now, we can put the batteries back in. And this is now active. So, when you get these keyboards, they come with a little dongle here. Um, right, right there. Uh, that basically is paired up with each individual keyboard you get. There aren't multiple frequencies on these things. They're, they're cheap keyboards after all. So. What you want to make sure is uh, keep track of the number that you wired. So this is this is the dongle that came with that keyboard. It's number one. Looks like a number two. It's number one. And uh, just write number one on the bottom here because that's what the number is wired for. Or you know if you wired your uh, if you programmed your game to look for A B C presses, then you could you know wire them A B C. So this is number one. Done. I've gone ahead and done five other buttons um, just to test it out because it is kind of weird. You're essentially hooking five wireless keyboards up to your uh, up to your computer. Um, it sounds like that probably shouldn't work, but it, surprisingly enough, it does. Uh, since each one of these things comes paired with its own dongle, uh, you can just plug it into. Uh, like I have a seven-port wire or seven-port USB hub here, so you just plug them in. There you go. You got your little antenna array there, and uh, basically hook it up to your computer and uh, start pressing buttons and see what works. Antenna array plugged into the keyboard. Number one. You will notice at no time does my hand leave my wrist. Cool, eh? Let's see. Which one is this? <laughs> Number four. See? And they work currently. So essentially, if you had a bunch of these, you could make your own giant sized keyboard. But, yeah, it would be kind of expensive. Uh, yeah, so it looks like this uh, this little sojourn into the mind of Dave was a, a bit of a resounding success. I'll take you through a demonstration of the game, and uh, you know some of its uh, some of its buzzer logic and whatnot later. It's just built in Flash, and you know essentially you run it full screen, and uh, you know pump it through a projector, put it on a wall, and boom, you have an instant game show. Pretty cool, eh? Alright, see you on the flip side.